Let's break down what defenses you can pick up off of the waiver wire to stream this week to help you dominate week six of 2024 fantasy football, as well as our must start defenses moving in to week six. Before we do so, let me remind you guys that Underdog is the place you want to be if you want to get in on additional fantasy football action all season long. Their week five pickums for Monday Night Football are live, and Underdog is giving all new users who sign up with promo code THECATCH a free Patrick Mahomes over half of a total yard to use toward tonight's game. And don't worry, if you watch this video later in the week, you're going to receive a free Brock Purdy over half of a total yard pick them to use towards Thursday night football. And if you watch this video at the end of the week, don't worry, you'll get a free pick for Sunday. On top of that, Underdog is giving all new users who sign up with promo code the catch a 50% deposit up to $1,000. Very quickly, we've got a few teams on bye week this week. Going to make it a little bit more difficult in terms of our must start defenses. We got the Chiefs on bye. The time we're recording this, Monday night football has not been played. So, you know, I, I don't exactly know how they've looked against the Saints, but I expect them to still be a good, safe play on a week-in, week-out basis. Rams, Dolphins, we're not worried about them, but then we got the Vikings, the highest-scoring defense in fantasy football right now, also on bye week. On top of that, it's a little bit of a tough week. Short week for the Niners and the Seahawks. Both of these defenses you know, would be potential starts this week. I don't know against each other. I don't know that I love them. The Bucks are at the Saints. Don't really love the Saints defense this week, who I, I still think is an okay floor play, but the Bucks offense has obviously been very good, so I don't know that I particularly trust them. The Commanders are coming off of two good weeks, but they're traveling to face the Ravens. The Ravens defense just hasn't been that good this year on the season, and now they're facing the Commanders offense. It's overall a pretty tough week. The Texans are traveling to the Patriots, but I don't trust this Texans defense whatsoever. They've been awful so far on the season. The Steelers are traveling to the Raiders, but the Steelers are so highly rostered that I don't want to include them in the video because you're not going to be able to pick them up off of the waiver wire. The Falcons are traveling to face the Panthers should be a good start, but I don't trust the Falcons. They've been awful defensively as well. We've got the Lions facing the Cowboys. Can't start either of those. Too good of offenses. And then we got the Bengals traveling to the Giants, but Daniel Jones hasn't been as bad as you might think, and I don't trust the Bengals' defense. They have been awful, so it is a tough week for defensive special teams, but I think I've got a couple of teams here that you guys can either stream or that you must start that we need to go over as we approach week six. Let's kick the video off with the Bears, who will face the Jaguars, currently sitting as the defense number five in fantasy football. They're at 60% rostered, so you kind of got to check your leagues. They may be available. They may not, but definitely still worth mentioning here. They have eight or more fantasy points in three out of five games on the season. The two games where they did not have eight or more fantasy points where they're two road games at the Texans and at the Colts in weeks two and three. This past week against the Panthers overall allowed just 10 total points, had four sacks, two forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, and an interception, 292 total yards allowed. Now the Jaguars have been playing better. They're certainly not the worst team in the league like they were looking a few weeks ago coming off of that loss to the Bills, but Trevor Lawrence did throw an interception this past week, so I think there's some turnover potential here. And overall, I mean, the Jags are allowing for these weird game scripts because their defense is so bad, and then it's just like we have to throw the football, and, you know, Tank Bigsby has looked good. So I do think there's a little bit of risk here with the Bears. But since they are one of the teams that are still potentially available in your league, I definitely felt like they were worth mentioning. And on top of that, they have still been pretty dang good on the season, like I said, sitting as a defense five overall in fantasy football. They're going to have a bye week in week seven, and then after that, it's not so pretty. They get Washington and Arizona, both road games as well. Then they're going to be at home against the Patriots, which is probably okay, but then they get the Packers. Then they get the Vikings. Then they're at the Lions, at the Niners, <laughs> at the Vikings. Lions at home, Seattle. So this might truly be the last time outside of maybe that week 10 matchup against the Patriots where I'm comfortable starting the Bears. 
So let's try and take advantage of that. They're coming off of their second best fantasy performance of the season in week five is 16 fantasy points. I think they bring a safe floor in week six and still have a little bit of upside as we move into the week. All right, next up, let's take a look at the Packers who will face the Cardinals at home. Now, this Packers defense is so interesting. They sit at 33% rostered, and uh, they went into week five as the defense two in fantasy football, but they're giving up like a ton of total offense. They're giving up a lot of passing yards, 370 passing yards allowed to the Rams in week five, and they still walked away with 14 fantasy points because this team leads the league in turnovers. They've had a massive amount of turnovers, eight interceptions, three forced fumbles on the season for 11 turnovers so far, 13 sacks, a lot of total yards though. So far in the season, 1,359 total yards through the first five games. So this is just an interesting defense that finds ways to make plays, get turnovers. And the result is that they have had double digit fantasy points in three out of five games so far on the season. And in the games that they haven't had double digit fantasy points, they've had seven fantasy points. So the floor is still pretty safe with the Packers. You know, seven fantasy points, not great, but at least it's something. And then on the weeks where they're getting you double digits, you're obviously going to walk away happy as they have a ceiling of 21 fantasy points in week three against the Titans. This past week against the Rams allowed just 13 points. Uh, they had three sacks, a forced fumble from a recovery and an interception, 370 total uh, yards, but overall they're just finding a way to get it done. Now the Cardinals on the other hand, walked away with a victory in week five. And, you know, do I particularly love this matchup? No, Kyler Murray's coming off of his, you know, arguably best game of the season, probably not his best, his second best game of the season, 195 passing yards, a touchdown, but his best rushing day of the season, 83 yards on the ground and a rushing touchdown as well. So, you know, I, I don't love the matchup per se, but I didn't love the matchup against the Rams, believe it or not, in week five, and they still walked away with 14 fantasy points. So they're also one of these teams sitting at just 33% roster that you can pick up and play this week. If you're in need of a streaming defense this week, I think they're a solid stream. Once again, the floor is safe. The upside is there. The ceiling's pretty high. The Packers are out there. You need someone to start this week. I think they are a good start moving in to week six. All right, next up, let's talk about the Denver Broncos. They're going to be the highest rostered team on today's video, sitting at 74% rostered, but they just remain a must-start defense on a week-in, week-out basis. Gave up 18 total points in week five. They had three sacks, three interceptions, and Pat Sertain had that 100-yard interception return touchdown. You know, they gave up 330 total yards, but it just did not matter. They walked away with 15 fantasy points. This is another team that is just playing good defensive football right now. They get the Chargers in week six. It's a home game for the Broncos. Maybe the ceiling's not as high this week, but you know this Chargers team doesn't necessarily scare me. Justin Herbert's been a little bit banged up. I guess he's going to be good to go week six. I mean, this team really needed that week five bye week, but you know, I just feel good about the Broncos. I don't think I need to break this one down super extensively. We obviously didn't see the Chargers play in week five. Uh, you know, they're going to have Dobbins, Quinn Johnson, Lad McConkey. You know, they're going to have a shot here to put up some points. But my bet is that this uh, game ends up a bit defensive. We know that the Chargers are going to want to play defensive football. The Broncos right now have had some improvements offensively. Looked much better in week five, albeit it was the Raiders. But I think this game is still going to be one of those kind of gross lower scoring games like we saw in week four against the Jets for the Broncos. So Broncos, super solid, fantastic must start defense moving in to week six. And let's stick with that same matchup and talk about the Chargers who had a week five bye week and got dropped in a lot of leagues. They're sitting at just 8% rostered and 15 points in week one, 11 in week two, just four in week three, eight in week four. So like I just mentioned, the Broncos have improved offensively, but I still think that Bo Nix has some volatility in his rookie season. I don't know that we're going to be just, you know, able to flat out stream whatever defense is playing Bo Nix, but you look at the last two weeks. He threw for 60 yards in week four and one touchdown. <laughs> this past week, he threw for 206 passing yards and two touchdowns. Um, had 23 fantasy points. So 
six point seven to twenty three fantasy points is a very drastic difference. But overall in the season, this is still a rookie quarterback prone to some mistakes. It is a home game for the Broncos, but I think that the Chargers defense is a solid start this week, especially like. You know, uh, if you've been riding the Vikings all season long and there's, you know, you're in a deeper league or even if you're just in a 12 team league, you've been riding the Vikings, you need someone to pick up and play. I think that the Chargers are a safe play this week. I don't know that the ceiling's super high, but once again, I like this matchup. I like this game for both the Broncos defense and the Chargers defense moving in to week six. All right. And I'm going to mention this next team and let you guys know that I do not trust them at all. But let's talk about the Philadelphia Eagles who will have the Cleveland Browns at home. They're still sitting at 20% rostered, which kind of surprised me. Uh, Maybe it's because of the stretch they're about to have. Cleveland at home, at the Giants, at the Bengals. That one probably doesn't count. But then the Jaguars at home. But they are the defense 26 right now in fantasy football. So I don't trust them. And the secondary has been awful. And I'm not quite sure that you should trust them, but I also would be willing to start defenses against the Browns right now. I did not trust the Commanders going into week five, and I think part of that is because I'm a Commanders fan, and I've watched plenty of Washington teams over the years. Uh, be hard to trust, but they hardly allowed anything against the Browns in week five, and Deshaun Watson has just looked not even like an NFL quarterback, but the commanders had 14 points against the Browns, their best mark of the season in week five, seven sacks, forced fumble, seven sacks though. So I think that the Eagles can muster up something as bad as this defense has been throughout the season, as bad as the secondary has been on the season. They have just one forced fumble, two interceptions, over 1,400 total yards allowed into six sacks, as well as 96 points allowed on the season. So, like I said, they're the defense 26 right now. If you are desperate, you need someone to pick up and stream for the week. I'm going to go ahead and say that the Eagles are startable this week purely because they are playing Deshaun Watson and the Cleveland Browns. All right, last team we're going to mention is the Buffalo Bills. Bills who will travel to face the Jets in week six. They sit at 31% rostered. And, you know, this is another defense that I'm a little bit shaky on, but believe it or not, they are the defense seven right now in fantasy football. Okay. So in week five, yes, they gave up 23 points to the Texans. They had a sack, a forced fumble, and an interception and allowed 425 total yards. So definitely a tough defense to trust. I mean, they've been kind of all over the place. Looked you know, fantastic weeks two and three. Looked really bad week four. Looked okay in week five, but then walked away with a loss, which makes them look even worse. So I don't know exactly what to expect out of them, but I think they have a decent floor this week, and they're a lot lower rostered at 31% rostered, that if you need someone to pick up, I think they are definitely startable. Uh, It's one of the last games of the week in Week six, this will be actually the last game. This will be Monday Night Football. And this is interesting because the main thing here is that, you know, I think Aaron Rodgers has a high chance of playing, but he's also dealing with that ankle injury. And if he does not play, then we're looking at, you know, Tyrod Taylor, I guess, would be the next guy up who has had some success in, you know, his career. And ironically enough, has had some success with Buffalo in his career. But, you know, if we can pick up a team to stream against a backup quarterback, we always want to try and do that. But if Rodgers plays, he's coming off of his, uh, I would say, worst game of the season. If I mean, maybe week four was his worst week of the season against Denver. But week five, he had three interceptions. You know, definitely his worst game of the season in terms of turnovers. So he did throw for two touchdowns and 244 passing yards. But I don't know. I feel like either way that the Bills have a safe floor if they face Rodgers. If they don't face Rodgers, I think they have some sneaky upside and they're a little bit lower rostered overall. So, you know, I think the Bills are in a weird place right now. I can understand why you wouldn't want to start them. But like I said, it's a tough week for streaming defenses. It's a tough week for just like flat out must start defenses. So I want to try and include one or two teams here at the end that you guys should be able to pick up that you can at least cross your fingers on as we approach week six. And that'll do it for today's video. Guys, don't forget, I'm answering all fantasy football questions in the comment section down below. If you guys need anything whatsoever moving into week six, make sure you drop in the comment section. I will answer every single 
comment on today's video. On top of that, we're going to have everything on the channel as the week goes on that you need to dominate week six of 2024 fantasy football. Start sits at every single position, must start kickers, waiver wire ads, last minute waiver wire ads, must start players, buy low targets, live fantasy Q&A streams throughout the week, everything that you guys could need. So make sure you guys are checking out all of the content on the channel as the week goes on and make sure that you are subscribed so that you don't miss out on any of the content. And with that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.